Hello everyone, my name is Shafi. Today in this class we are going to discuss about routing. What is routing? How many types of routing we have? Then finally we are going to be configure the routing that one. Okay. So any idea what is routing? Okay, see here, uh, there is a diagram we have. <coughs> Consider, <coughs> this is my one network. Okay, this is the router A, router B I'm having. Consider this is the headquarter and this is the branch office. In the headquarter, we have an IP address 192.168.3.0 network. In a branch office, we have 192.168.1.0 network. Okay, then... Uh, I'm connecting from the headquarter to branch office. That's a serial connection. So between this router, see inside this router, we have a different network. And between this router, we have a different network. And again, in the router B internal, we have a different network. Now I want to communicate from one network to another network. For example, I have office in Bangalore, another office in Chennai. Okay. So within Bangalore, we have a different network. Within Chennai, we have a different network. Now I want to communicate from Bangalore to Chennai here. Obviously, when you are connecting from Bangalore to Chennai, that is different network, three networks. See, see within, consider this is the Bangalore, 1.0 network Bangalore we have. To connect from Bangalore to Chennai, 2.0 network we have. Then within Chennai, inside the Chennai network, we have a 3.0 network. Now to communicate from here to here, then we require routing. To make this routing, we have to use one device called router. What is router? Its component, its boot up process, how we can access that router, and what is the basic configuration of the router, which we have discussed in the last class here. Okay, now we are discussing about the routing here, this one. Okay, let's see, we have a different uh, definition for this routing. Routing is a process of uh, sending packet from one network to another network. Here, sending is missing. Okay, it is a process of sending or carrying the packet from one network to another network. It is called routing. It means whatever the information you have. Okay, so it will be carrying that information from one network to another network. That's called routing for that process. So there is another definition we have. Routing is the path that network data or packet takes to reach its destination on the network. Okay, however, see there is another definition it has given but finally routing means what okay so there are two things happens in the routing first <clears throat> it has to be select the path okay now from bangalore to chennai to reach you have a multiple paths you don't have a single path okay if you have a single path always it takes that single path to reach the destination when you have a multiple paths here it's going to be decide which is the best path which is the best path to reach the destination. One, after that, after selecting the best path, whatever the information you have, it's going to carry that information over the best path is the routing, that one. That's how we have the routing. Again, depend on the routing, what type of routing you are implementing. We have a different types of routing. So in the next slide, we can see that one, how many different types of routing we have this one. Based on that routing, how you have configured, how you means administrator based on that it's going to be work the network router is what decide the best route for each network packet means router is going to be decide the which is the best path okay again depend on what protocol you have implemented based on the protocol every protocol it takes its own metric to select the best path okay Basic component need to be route, one routable protocol, IP4, IP6, subnet must be required, next hop and metric we require. Okay, see these are the components which use to select the best path and to carry the information, this one. Means to reach either IP address is required. Without an IP address, is it possible to reach? It's not possible to reach. So there are two types of IP address we have, IPv4 and IPv6. Either you can use IPv4 or IPv6. One. Next, subnet mask also is required. Why? Because it has to be understand whether it's into the same network or different network. So that's the reason network address and subnet mask be required. And also next hop and metric address. Next hop means what happened here, this one. 
when you are connecting uh, when to reach the destination in between you will be getting a multiple routers we are not connecting always source to the destination with a single connection or single path okay example this is my source okay this is my source so i want to reach the destination here maybe you have another router another router is connected another router is connected then finally it's connected to this one so here what happened here this one see to reach consider you don't have this connection to reach from here to here it has to go to this one router 2 router 3 router 4 then finally it has to become to the router 5 this is my router 1 got it here so this is what next hop next hop means this router is connected to one more network or one more router who is my next hop here r2 is the next stop so this router one is directly connected to the router two which router the source is means any router which is connected directly that will be considered as the next stop for an example you want to reach from bangalore to chennai so to reach the bangalore to the chennai so there are in between we get uh, other places here via that uh, you know location or where that uh, you know what say town or village you have to be passed for example next you have to go to the next stop will be hosur hosur krishnagiri velu this is how you will be having a different path that one so here also what happened this one in networking it will be not connecting see for an example it's not possible to connect directly from bangalore to chennai in between we get multiple hops that one okay how the multiple hops we get it based on the service provider always even when you want to communicate from bangalore to chennai again you are not connecting you are not grabbing a cable directly from bangalore to chennai here always okay so if you remember on the types of network there are many types of network where network is going to offer but famous networks are two which are those lan and wan okay within the company within the building always we use the lan network if my traffic wants to be or my user wants to be go outside the building always we use the van van means internet right means always we are communicating over the internet here again here also from bangalore to chennai you want to communicate you are not grabbing a cable router something always you go with the van connection here okay we are not connecting directly here this one okay if you want later i am going to give you in the real time how exactly connectivity comes <clears throat> in a real time how exactly connectivity comes that one or else if you want let's explain now let's see okay i'm having one office in bangalore guys going to mute guys online okay this is the one office i'm having consider this is your bangalore office blr then you have office in singapore then you have office in for example you can take chennai okay then there is another office in KOP, King of Persia, US. <laughs> Example four location I have taken. Okay, in each location we use the router, right? We have router here. Here also we have a router. Here also router we have. Here also we have a router here. Okay, now this is my. ISP I am having here in internet service provider. Which one you have here? <clears throat> okay. Here I am talking about Bangalore. We have Airtel. We have Tata. This is how the providers we have. Airtel, Tata. Okay. Uh, Geo Act also is there, but very less in the corporate networks. Okay. That uh, more into home networks. Okay. But in the corporate network these are the famous provider airtel and tata is the famous provider here now we are getting a internet 
ओके हाउ वी आर गेटिंग इंटरनेट हियर सम हाउ दे ग्रैब द केबल ओके फाइबर ऑप्टिक केबल दे बी ग्रैबिंग ओके एंड दिस इज माई राउटर इन बैंगलोर ऑफिस ओके डेटा सेंटर वॉट दे डू हियर दिस वन every tech park if you can see the tech park already they lay the cables while uh, you know building that infrastructure and everything they'll call all the providers they give the spaces over there if you want to install your cable you can be installed they give some spaces they will lay the cable here so not required every time they'll be not grabbing a cable from the provider consider this is somewhere till the tech park this cable is there airtel or tata cable the fiber optic cable we have from here they are giving the connection to this office here how they are giving okay from here there will be some devices here it will be terminate from here they will be giving one more connection okay <clears throat> so it comes here they use one device it's called mux it's called mux okay this is actual uh, connectivity comes in the real time here mux okay and this device also a small switch it looks like a switch actually yeah, mux okay this connection it will be terminate here and what type of cable is this fiber optic this is a fiber optic cable from the mux okay there will be you will be having the ports here 3 4 6 8 ports will be there small it looks like a switch mux means what it's a switch it looks like a switch that's it from here you are taking one more cable connecting to the router this is how connectivity comes whenever you go whenever you are getting a connection from the provider directly you are not connecting to the router directly we are not connecting to the router here this one so always in between they use one device it's called mux from this they are connecting to the router here now this cable if you want to use fiber optic you can use fiber optic or normal ethernet cable have you seen that ethernet cable this type of if you want you can use it's up to you that one how you are using suppose you are using the fiber optic cable in router we don't have the fiber optic interface there is a sftp port okay the converters comes converting from fiber optic cable to ethernet port so that's how sftp port you will be using here this one that's how the connectivity comes this one okay this is actually the connectivity comes but whenever we discuss okay and uh, whenever we do the practicals or the lab scenarios or whenever you attend any interview they will not ask all this thing but connectivity it will be like this one now how the uh, my router is connecting for example this is my bangalore router isp this is how i am connecting isp right so i'm not displaying here this one it goes to the mux mux to here this one this is how and always whenever we use the serial cable uh, sorry from the router to the provider we use serial cable right serial cable on the van we use but now in the production we don't have the serial cables we have the fiber optic or ethernet port only we have we don't have the serial why because serial cable you take any serial cable maximum it will be having the 1.544 mbps speed how much speed we have serial cable 1.544 mbps speed we have this one this serial cable also it's a t1 cable okay generally t1 cable serial cable also it's a t1 cable because few guys they can understand what is the t1 cable that one that we use in the collaboration okay so the similar uh, Uh, concept we get it in the serial here in this one but not exactly t1 so that's the reason what is the maximum bandwidth for the t1 1.544 serial also 1.544 mbps but now we require more bandwidth we require what more bandwidth here okay 100 mbps 200 mbps gbps this is how we require so that's the reason if you go with the serial very less bandwidth we get so that's the reason this is how the connectivity comes but when we do whenever i explain i'm not going to be show you the topology like this one directly i'm connecting router to router okay this is my headquarter this is my branch office this is my service provider then you have to be understand that one okay and whenever if i write like this this is the serial connection 
So this is router. Whenever if I write like this, this is the switch. This is the serial cable. This is how you have to understand. Okay. That's uh, how the diagram represents. Whenever if you want to write it down, okay, you have to keep practice this one. Because if you go to the interview, they'll ask about to write it out the topology or diagram. That's how you are going to be right. How you can write the router. This is how you can write the router. Got it? <laughs> so this connection, <laughs> not only for your uh, internet, even the T1 and uh, SIP trunk, that comes same thing, same way. The T1 E1 connection we have right. So they'll grab it and they'll be connecting the mux from the mux they get for internet also T1 E1 also and uh, SIP uh, trunk connection also we get same connectivity. They install some mux after installing the mux. Okay, <clears throat> they configure that one. This is the mux. It's like a switch. It looks like a switch here. No, that what happened uh, somewhere the DMAR devices. See, always what happened, they will not grab a cable from the provider. So the provider will be there somewhere the junction till the, the tech park, they will lay the cable. Okay, they will be lay the cable, they keep it somewhere. So they give the permission for all the providers. Next, whenever you require internet, they give the connection from here itself. There will be a devices here. These are the right. The devices will be there here. This one. Here the device will be there. That is already installed that one. When uh, they have given the permission, this one. From here, they will grab the cable and connect. That's it. But it, this is how actually the connectivity comes. After this one, what happened? Here you can connect to your switch. Okay, here switch you can connect. From here, whatever the servers, however you want connect internally. This is my internal network. Now connect from this router to the provider. Actually the connectivity looks, but generally we write like this. Clear? <laughs> okay, see here now, I want to communicate Bangalore, I have one user here. Singapore, there is one user. I want to communicate from Bangalore to Singapore here. See, now we are directly not connecting from Bangalore. See here, there is another service provider we have in the Singapore. Example, Singtel. Okay, Singtel is the provider. In Singapore, we have this one. Okay, from there, we have taken the connection. Here, we have taken the connection from the Airtel here, this one. So now to connect from here, my whenever if I communicate or try to send any traffic, okay, the traffic goes to ISP, my ISP. Now it has to be reached to the final Singtel here. In between what happened, there will be multiple providers. Finally, it will be reaching from here to here. It goes here to here, here to here. This is called hops. One provider to another provider one location to another location, there will be some connectivity, that one. Okay, how that connection they have, uh, everything. So the provider will take care. We are not going to responsible that. But uh, for that, there is a separate course in uh, Cisco, service provider. Okay, if you learn the service provider, so how exactly service provider works, what infrastructure, devices, protocol they will be having, you'll be learning on that one. So one provider to another provider, there will be a connectivity. Maybe this is in Bangalore. From here, Bangalore, Chennai, we have connected. From the Chennai, somewhere, Kanyakumari, we have connected. From the Kanyakumari, then Singapore, we have connected here, this one. Okay, maybe sometimes here, uh, see, when I'm connecting from Bangalore to Chennai, maybe it's a different provider here. Again, here, we have the Airtel itself. Where? In Kanyakumari. Again, from uh, Singapore, we have a Singtel here. Somehow, the connectivity is there. What is the terminologies? What is the technology? How the connectivity? So, no need to be worried about that one, which is already connected, which is already designed. And the provider, they will take care of this one 
everything routing and everything but actually traffic will be route here but when you discuss well, how we do hey this is my bangalore office this is my singapore office i am connecting whenever if you right click this one maybe in between you get multiple providers multiple hubs whatever it may be but in the lab scenario i am connecting this is my source and this is my destination and for this source this is my next hub it's now now here in a lab scenario when you are learning it's not possible to place like 10 15 routers okay so only we had to reach our traffic from my uh, router to till provider after that provider will take care how to read the destination clear any doubts any questions okay <laughs> sorry that's how the routing still routing is continuing router will only use routes with reachable next hops okay always what happened it uses reachable next hop i have multiple hops next hop i have connected to multiple routers suppose one router i am unable to reach i will not take into the consideration here okay next hop means which is connected directly to the another router next routers will only use the best routes okay suppose to communicate from one place to another place source to destination bangalore to chennai if you have a multiple paths okay you get multiple paths you will not get single path when you get a multiple path it will be selecting the best path to reach the destination how it's going to select the best path we'll discuss later okay how it's going to select the best path we'll discuss later that one so that's the depend on the metric okay every routing protocol having its own metric what is that metric okay how it select the best path we'll discuss later routing protocols do not send packet across the network their role is to determine the best path for the routing see you know the switch how switch works for example the broadcast broadcast means what happened here this one if any traffic comes i'm going to send it for everyone in my switch but router will not do like that one okay router does always see router supports only two types of communication one is the unicast another one is the multicast router supports two types of communication unicast and multicast communication if any broadcast traffic is coming to the router it is going to drop automatically that one okay so for example i am getting a traffic it looks who is source who is destination if i know the destination how to reach then only i'll process if I don't know the destination how to reach, straight forward, I'm going to be drop the packet. I'm going to drop the packet. I don't know. When I don't know, I'm not going to forward my information to the next router. Boss, I don't know. If you can have any information, please take it. I'll not work like that. If I know destination how to reach, then only I'll process. If I don't know how to reach the destination, then I'm going to be drop the packet. Okay, routed protocols actually send the data. The most common example of routed protocol is IP. We have two things, routing and routed. Routed means which is already designed, configured, and that's a standard. Example, IP address you have, right? That's a routed protocol. Now we have it separately routing protocol. Routing protocol that you had to implement that manually, that one. Okay, IP address is routed, which they have set some standards. What is IP address, how many classes, ranges, subnet mask, how it works and everything, which is already set that one by few organization. So that is a routed protocol. Routing means according to your requirement, the organization requirement, you have to implement that one. The routing table is connected with the two types of layer three protocol, uh, routed protocol, example, IP, IPPX, Apple Talk, routing protocol, Okay, where the protocol comes here, this one, example, RIP, EHRP, OSPF, okay. Don't worry about what is this routing table and everything, routed protocol or routing protocol here, this one. You'll be, we'll be discussing that one. So that's how the, the routing, it works. Got it? Routing, what is routing means? Routing, it's a process of selecting the best path to reach the destination. After selecting the best path, Okay, it carries the information over that best path. 
that's a very simple definition routing routing is a process of connecting between two different network and also it will be selecting the best path after selecting the best path, whatever the information you have it's going to carry that information over the best path that's it the uh, routing next types of routing we have okay there are two types of <laughs> static routing dynamic routing we have there is a one more routing we have default routing that default routing also comes under the static later we'll discuss that one default routing okay routing there are two types of routing static routing and dynamic routing here this one i again in the dynamic routing it's classified into two types igp interior gateway protocol egp exterior gateway protocol here this one okay again in the dynamic we have it's classified into two types interior gateway protocol exterior gateway protocol again in the interior gateway protocol it's divided into three types link state distance vector hybrid protocol okay now we are going to be discuss about okay here static routing okay again i'm not going to take in detail here for you guys why because you will be not working on this routing every time and if you go to the interview also they are not going to be ask you anything about from the routing here this one so that's the reason i'm not taking in detail about what exactly all this uh, routing protocols how it works everything this one only some basic knowledge i'm giving so i'm going to show you the static routing the practical we are coming to the dynamic in the igp out of three protocol i'm going to take any one protocol i'm not again explaining uh, how that three protocol works how we can configure that one for your knowledge any one protocol i'm going to take and explain you that one how that protocol works how we can configure in this one so as a voice network engineer this much knowledge is enough if you have this much basic knowledge that's enough for you to get into that one but if you go to the interview nobody will ask any question from the routing or if you when you are working there will be a separate engineer who is going to be take care of all these things you are not going to work on the routing part here this one there is a separate dedicated engineer network team there will be a separate team network team the network engineer they will take care of this one but still <coughs> sorry guys but still as a voice network still you should have the knowledge about what is routing and how that protocols works and how we can implement that one clear any doubts any questions This is something uh, given about uh, in this one. I'll come back. What is the static routing? In the dynamic routing, IGP. In IGP, there are three types. Uh, it's it's divided into three types: link state, uh, distance vector hybrid. About that, it it has given here in the next slide here. Distance vector routing protocol, link state protocol. Example. RIP and EHRP, these are the protocols. Okay. Uh, RIP and EHRP, it comes under the distance vector. OSPF and ISIS, okay, that comes under the link state protocol. Uh, convergence time, high, low, configuration, it's simple, it's a bit complex configuration, routing update, send, uh, send entire routing table uh, <clears throat> every 30 to 90 seconds okay only uh, partial update it's going to use use for small network use for big network routing loops how it's going to detect routing metric okay to select the best path it use metric okay what is the metric that one it uses here it has given don't worry about this one okay i'll give uh, i'll explain you the metric uh, i'm going to take ospf protocol okay because because it's an industry standard protocol you go to many organization, OSPF protocol is implemented. So in that, you'll be understand what exactly this metric loop and everything. Hybrid protocol means it is a combination of uh, both, both advantages of uh, distance vector and link state protocol and merges them into a new protocol. Typically, hybrid routing protocols are based on a distance vector protocol, but contains many of the features, advantages of link state routing protocol also. Hybrid means what in general? It's a combination. It's a combination of two different protocol. It's a hybrid protocol.
okay so there are here three types of uh, routing we have but both static and default it same only the configuration part is different both static and default is same only the configuration is different here so static routing we have default routing we have then dynamic routing we have this one okay so what is static routing and what is dynamic routing here static routing adding the destination information manually to routing table it's a static routing example <clears throat> I am going to give you one topology. <coughs> See, I am going to take one router. This is my router 1. This is the router 2. Okay. See, I have connected internal network here. Here internal network. Router 1 to router 2. It is a serial connection I am having. So, whenever this is a switch. And I have connected. See, consider here the PCs are connected. Multiple laptop or desktop is connected here. When you are connecting on the LAN, okay, which interface we have to use on the router? Ethernet port. So, here gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 I am using. So remember Ethernet, fast Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet. This port we use to connect router locally, any other device. Any means router switch. Now, I am connecting what? Switch. This is the switch. I am taking one cable and connecting to this one. Then this gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0, I had to assign the IP address also here. So you can take one IP address here. 192.168.1.0 slash 24. That means 1.0 network. 24 I am taking. Now what is the first IP address? 1.1. .1. Always first IP address I am going to assign to the router which router interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 now this pc comes into this network example this pc ip address here okay 192.168.1.2 it can be anything 1.1 it's not there and subnet mask 255.255.255.0 why because it's a class c ip address then every PC we have to assign the gateway address also, if you remember. Now, gateway is 192.168.1.1. Whenever if you want to be go outside, how you are going outside? Through, through this router, you are going outside, right? Now, if you want to read this router, via which IP address you are reaching? If the traffic is coming here, okay, traffic is hit, coming to the switch. From the switch, it has to be read the router. How it's reaching? via 0 slash 0 gigabit and what is the IP address 1.1 that is your gateway so uh, this is my laptop I have one router for this laptop that is my router through that router I am going outside even in the home connection so that's how we have to be assigned here next to connect from router 1 to router 2 always we use the serial example serial 0 slash 0 here and here also serial 0 slash 0. Both the end we have to connect here. Now between this we have to take a different IP address. Again you cannot take 1.0. 1.0 it is internal network. To connect from router 1 to router 2. Different network. It should be not the same network. If you try to assign the same network conflict happens. You get an error that one. For an example I am taking 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 0 slash 24. Actually, 10 is a class A, but I have taken as a class C. Okay. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Here I am going to assign 10.1. Here I am going to assign 10.2. Same network, right? Means 10.1, 10. .1, 10 .1 means 10.10.10.1, 10.10.10.2. This one. Again, here, which interface? Yes, gigabit 0 slash 0, which is connected in the switch. Here, I'll take a different IP address. Example, 192.168.2.0 network. Okay, here, whatever the PCs I'm having, its IP address is 192.168.2.2. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Gateway. 2.1 see 
if the router, if this traffic has to be go where this interface. Here I'm going to think 2.2 .2 is my gateway IP address. 192.168.2.2. Sorry, yeah, 2.1. Sorry. 2.1 is my gateway here. That's how the topology I'm having. Got it, everyone? Okay. Now the question is here. I want to reach from this PC. This is my source. And this is my destination. <clears throat> okay. I want to reach from here to here. I don't have any direct connection. The traffic has to be come first to the router. From the router, it has to go to the router too. From the router too, it has to be reached to this destination here. This is what routing. This is what routing how you are going to. For an example, I am trying to communicate to this one. My traffic it is going to hit to the router first. Now, router is going to check it out source and destination information. Who is source? Okay, source is 192.168.1.0 network. Actually, 1.2 network. I'm getting 1.0 network. Okay, I know 1.0 network. That's my connected network. Connected network means any network which is connected directly on any interface. Now, router, you have multiple interfaces, right? Gigabit, Ethernet, serial interface, that one. In that interface, which network is okay connected, for that, it will be considered as connected network. C equals. C means connected network. Means which is, that is the IP address connected directly to me, router here. Now, who is the destination? Destination is 192.168.2.0 network, right? Network is 2.0. In that scenario, router maintains routing table. Router maintains what? Routing table. It goes to its routing table. I'm going to my routing table. It's going to check it out. Source, it exists. 1.0, it's a connected network. But I don't have any information of 2.0 network here. I have one more information. C is equal to 192. Dot, sorry. 10.10.10.0 this network I'm having here but I don't have 192.168.2.0 network in that scenario what happened I'm going to drop the packet whenever if any traffic hits to the router router is going to check it out source and destination information okay if the destination is not exist under its routing table I don't know how to route that one straightforward I'm going to drop that packets here Okay, now in this scenario, we have to implement routing. We have to implement what? Routing. Now I want to communicate to that network. So there are two types of routing we have. Static routing and dynamic routing we have. First, we'll discuss about the static. Static means what in general? Manually. No, now static routing means adding the destination information to its routing table. Now here, whatever this information I'm having, right? Okay, I'm going to add to my routing table 192.168.2.0. Yes. Yes means now I know this 2.0 network statically. That is what manually we had to add that information. That is what? Static routing. Got it? What is a static routing? As an administrator, you are adding the destination information to its routing table and also you are defining how to reach. Now you are defining that one. Bus, whenever you want to reach, then here we get one more option. Via, via 10.10.10.2. This is how we have added. Means whenever if the traffic hits here, if you want to reach this 2.0 network, reach via 10.2. Who is 10.2? This one. Go to the next hop IP address. That is what you are defining the path. If the traffic reaches here 10.2, now already 10.2, no. Why? Because it's a connected network. It can be read to the destination. This is how routing works. Got it? Okay. So dynamic routing means what? We are just implementing the protocol. Automatically, they will exchange the information. We implement protocol automatically they'll be in that one that is a dynamic routing so that's what static routing and dynamic routing 
we have here in this one. Got it? Any questions, any doubts? So, the practicals we'll do tomorrow, the static routing and default routing. Okay, now the lab is not set. So, I'll take the practicals tomorrow, that one. So, remember this uh, topology, we go with the same topology tomorrow. So, that you'll understand easily. Any doubts, any questions, guys?